This video was recorded live on my Twitch channel. Check out all of my live streams down in the description below. So City Trials is up! And it's the races that take place on tracks set in, uh, set in series of major world cities. Who will be crowned in the, the, the King of Streets? Oh my god. So these races take place on tracks set in a series of major world cities. Who will be crowned in the king of the streets? I already fucked that up twice, but you know what? We're going with it. So I'm going to break my promise here to everybody. I said I was going to use only premium cars, but I'm going to use a standard card for this one. And here's why. This is a standard car that you cannot use in Gran Turismo 4 at all. And the cockpit mode actually works and it looks great. So we're going to Chrysler. And we're going to buy the 2002 Chrysler Prowler. Rawr. And we're getting a yellow. Because I want to. I'm only using this because it's, it's a special model. The straight pipe car, yes. That's totally not hot rod of the 1930s meant for the boomers of the 2000s. Like, the, the early 2000s was weird with cars because, like... Oh, wait. This isn't GT Sport. Oh, actually, yes. This is GT6. I, I was trying to... I, I thought to myself, okay, maybe I'm going to have to remove TCS here, but then I remember, oh, yeah, I could buy tires in, in the settings mode. So, yes. Um, anyways, City Trials. As you can guess, street courses. Madrid, Tokyo Route 246, and London. And the opponents are like... They say Golf, Megan, Sylvia, but in reality, they're like... N300 cars from GT Sports, like R32s and Legacies and stuff like that. But, yeah, the 2000s was kind of weird because, like, there were a bunch of, like, boomer cars, like, meant for the boomer generate the, the boomer market, essentially. So, like, you had that weird Thunderbird. You had, um... Oh. Well, this is the first time I've never received a, um, opponent that was, like, a R34 or something. That's crazy. All right, I'll take it. We'll make it a bit easier for us, but fuck it. Just want to make sure the TCS was off because I'm used to GT Sport where you actually have to go and press OK in order to get the settings saved. We're still wearing the pink suit. I'll change that right after. I said that like the last time we played, but I completely forgot. But yeah, cockpit mode actually works in this car. Like the 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 cockpit looks really good. Like the gauges don't look. They don't really look too pixelated like some of the other cars, like the Chaparral, or especially like the LMP1 standard cars that are open cockpit. It sounds like a stock NSX. Yep. Pretty uh, generic Walmart brand serial style sounds to this car. But yeah, like if, if maybe the textures were cleaned up a bit and maybe the exterior was redone... And there was actual animations on, like... I don't know if this car was actually, like, a 5... Well, how many gears does that have? 4? Okay, so it's probably an automatic. But, like, maybe if, like, some things were tweaked up, this could have been a premium. This is probably one of the best-looking, um, at least interior-wise, models for the PS2 era. Oh, yes, yeah, so we have the FT86 concept, as Ender pointed out in the front. I forgot the FT86 concept was much faster than the final production model, GT86. Excuse me, coming through. The big boy coming through. Look at that suspension move around. But yeah, I mean, you had the Thunderbird, you had the Prowler, you had like all these cars that were trying to really bring back the old, old school style of, you know, car design or whatever. The SSR, you had all that shit. And then like, yeah, I mean, a lot of those cars just ended up flopping. The Thunderbird especially. Like, I don't know about the SSR. I, I mean, it didn't really last long. The Prowler was, like... It was very gimmicky, in my opinion. But for sure, the Thunderbird, I know, was a complete and utter failure. Like, I, I think Ford, when they made that O2 Thunderbird, they were kind of like, all right, well, we're going to design it like the 1950s, but we'll make it drive like the 1950s as well. At least, like, Doug DeMiro's review, when he was driving the car, he was like, yeah, this thing feels like a complete boat, and it feels like... The technology feels like it's like 40 years backwards. Which kind of reminds me too, like... It kind of reminds me of the Supra in a way too. Only because, like... 
everyone bitches and complains about the Supra being ugly and oh it's you know it's too modern it's not pure like the old Supra the, the, the. like well yeah but like at the same time if you if you have a car if you have a car on the market that's like that has super old ass technology in it and that hasn't really changed at all over the years then no one's gonna buy it case in point the 370z <laughs> like it's been the same car since uh 2008 or whatever the fuck it came out did you like the new design of the supra me too like it was a car that at first i didn't really like i was kind of like hmm i kind of wish it looked more like the ft1 like i kind of wish it, it, it retained a lot of its look i guess and then 2019 i saw it in person I think I was one of the first, not not really one of the first people ever in the world, but at least in the States, maybe. At the NASCAR Xfinity race at Auto Club Speedway, it was the pace car, so when I had my uh, credentials for media, I uh, got to see the pace car up close in person. I was like, you know what? This car looks so good up front. Like, damn. Damn, this car looks good. And yeah, that kind of changed my mind with the looks of the Supra. Hey, Fiends. How's it going, dude? I mean, sure, Jason, but what auto manufacturer doesn't collab with another car brand nowadays? Like, that's a common thing that happens now, and I get it. I get it because the Super is a cult icon and everything, blah, 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 but, like, I don't see people really shitting on the Pagani Zonda for essentially being a Mercedes. There we go. So, we have a Mark III Supra, speaking of the devil, and uh, I'm pretty sure that's an older spec in present, and that's leading the pack. Still feels boatish? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Bust. But, like, the thing is, dude, is that the 370Z literally has had no changes or updates since 2008. They're still releasing 2020 370Zs or 2019 models or whatever model year they, they decided to stop the 370Z. And literally nothing has changed. Like, I remember one of my sister's friends, right? Like, one of her friends, she owned a 350Z. And she wanted to get a 370Z because she liked the look of the headlights or whatever. She wanted something newer. And she wanted something that wasn't from, like, a police impound lot. And I specifically remember she was like, you know, I'm going to go to the dealer and maybe, you know, maybe I could find a new one. And I told her, no, do not buy a new one because literally it's the same fucking car as from, from 10 years ago. Try to find one with decent mileage and just get a big ass discount and like trust me the value of the car will significantly decrease when you take it out the lot and then she actually found like a 2009 or 10 model i can't remember in really good really good shape and relatively low miles for that year so that was cool speaking of the z yeah i did see it um you know that's a car that i talked to other people with about and like the reception that I'm getting is mixed. I personally think it's really cool. Although I'm not... Oh, fuck. That's what I get for reading chat. Um, I'm not really the type of person to say, like, oh, is this car is, you know, this car is already amazing, blah, 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 or it's going to suck, this is lame. It's a prototype. It is a prototype, so while it might not undergo a shit ton of changes by the final production model, I don't expect the car to be 100% complete right now. Yeah, yeah, GTT. That, that was the first Impreza. Well, maybe not the first. Maybe that's like the model, the number three? Like the version three or version two, but yeah, that's like a really early Impreza. That's the second right now. But I'm curious to see what the final model is going to look like. That's what I'm curious about, mainly. Like, will the final production model look good? Or, like, like they, they could... Nissan could still fuck it up. We don't know. The grill looks like an Aston Martin. I, I think the grill was a, a, a big cent, you know, center point of complaints from some of my friends who don't like the car. And I can understand, like... The grill does look kind of goofy, but I think overall the car looks good. But that's why I'm not really like... I I'm not really... Hey, Arthur. 
I'm not really like dismissing the car already, you know? Like, I I'm just kind of like saying, okay, the car looks neat. I like it. I'm just going to wait until the final model comes out. When the final model comes out, that's when we're going to really say, all right, whether this car is good or whether this car is bad. Oh my god, the understeer through the corner there. Like, what I'm mainly excited about is that normally when it comes to those types of cars, guys, like, it's usually a homage to, like, one. You know, you know what I mean? Like, one specific model year. So, for example, like, the 05 Mustang was supposed to be more styling cues from, like, the 60s, for example. Or, like can't think of any other cars but for the most part it's usually just one car that's modeled after what i like about the proto z is that it's modeled after like every generate almost every generation of z is thrown into there in one way or another which is why i really like it like i like the premise a lot i think it's cool and i can't wait to see what they come up with really like for the final uh, production model Do the head movement when we smack the wall. The Prowler. GT7, can we get the Prowler, please? And uh, can we have an FIA race around... Uh, what's a really tricky track? I'd say, like... Kyoto Yamagiwa Reverse in the fucking Prowler. That'd be amazing. Going through the chicane of awkwardness. Yo, Rush, what's up, dude? So, replay being saved because I want a thumbnail with the Impreza, possibly. Oh my god, London. That's right. London is last. And uh, I don't think it's going to be difficult necessarily, but I'm pretty sure that the race is going to be... Yeah. Maybe two attempts. Thank you, Fiends, for the host, by the way. Doing some homework. Uh, I got done with a lot of my assignments this week. Like, I powered through so much that I'm like, all right, today is a day for me to... Do a stream, maybe stream for like four hours or so. Do record some GT6, just chill and unwind, because I don't... Oh my god, there's two NSXs, an 05 Mustang, speak of the devil, again. A 300ZX and an Audi A3. Okay, this is going to be the toughest field so far. But you know what, the Prowler is American, and because it's American, we're going to win. Yeehaw, hoorah. Can we get some eagles in the chat, please? 66 questions for one point... What? Fucking hell, dude. <laughs> yeah, the host sound. Like, uh, bro, honestly, Gran Turismo menu sounds are so freaking good. Even GT Sport has good menu sounds, really. Like, like PD knows what they're doing. Well, except for 5. They know what they're doing when it comes to menu designs. Like, 5, okay, 5 had some really nice sounds to it. Unfortunately, the menu was dog shit where's the eagle emote um there should be an emoji there should be like a little emoji button unless it's because i actually have um oh fuck holy shit Un unless it's because i have like better ttv where i can access all the emojis that are normal yo jc what's up dude give me a second jc Uh, don't know what you're really referring to, but if it's something a bit controversial, I guess, then I'll go ahead and look at it later. I haven't really been on Twitter much today, so I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, oh yes, GT1, bro. Like, okay, so GT1 menu sounds were great. Like, three, two slash three, yes, they were, by the way, pushover AIs. There's no way two Honda NSX models should be defeated by a fucking Chrysler Prowler. This car fucking sucks. Like, in all seriousness, this is... I'm glad this car was not drivable in GT4 for career mode because this car is... It's ass. <laughs> like, it's so fucking bad. Is asking the same questions multiple times? Ew. Dude, I'm not looking forward. Like, so, like, I had an exam scheduled Wednesday, but because of the fires and, like, 
one of my professors, he lives in, like near, he lives basically in a hot spot where he has to evacuate. So like, um, because of the evacuation, he actually went and uh, postponed the test the next week. Temporarily. Thank you, Castro. I will. I actually remember this time, so I'll change the suit back to the to the black. But yeah, um, I I'm sort of like concerned about the test because the thing is that it uses like an eye monitoring app for your camera, and like my camera is really the fucking GoPro. Thank you, Ender. And um, because it's a GoPro on a clamp, I have to kind of like shimmy around to look around the monitor, you know, and it's not really ideal, but yeah, it is what it is. Well, that's the city trials done. And with that, let me go change the suit. Back to the black suit. Helmet's not changed. There we go. And on to the next race.